Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Azure Infrastructure Update. It is the 25th of September and a super quick update this week. It's always got the chapters, so you can jump to a particular update. New videos this week. I created a video really looking at Azure Data Explorer, a great service when we think about we have different types of typically time-based data like logs and metrics, when we'd be able to ingest them, store them, and then get analysis and insight from them. So Azure Data Explorer is a great service to do exactly that. Then I redid my video about creating your first VM in Azure through the portal. There have been a lot of changes to the portal. There were a lot of new options. So I thought, hey, it's been a couple of years. I should probably update it. On to what's new on the networking side, there's a number of custom rule improvements. So the whole point of custom rules is I can create my own rules on how different requests are processed. And we can think about, well, there's the regional web application firewall, which we link to App Gateway, which is a regional resource. Then there's a global web application firewall that we use with Azure Front Door. And both of them have had changes. So on the regional level, I WAF with App Gateway, you can now use an any operator and a greater than or equal operator. So just as part of my custom rules, I can now use different types of those operators. And at the global level, well, I can now do geomatch filtering based on the socket address. So for example, if a user was behind a proxy, then typically the socket address would be the proxy server address. And what this functionality with the geomatch rule does, it gives us the, the country, the location based on that mapping IP address. So we can then use based on the country in our rules. So improvements there. On the storage side, UltraDisk, remember UltraDisk is where we can independently set the throughput and the IOPS from the capacity. And not just can I independently set them, I can dynamically change them. So as the disk is being used, hey, if maybe I've got some nighttime batch where I need more throughput and or more IOPS, I can increase those values. I pay based on what the values are, but then I can decrease them again to what I need maybe at a regular run rate. So I can dynamically change those based on the need. Now available in Qatar Central region. ADLS Gen 2, i.e. Data Lake. So the ADLS Gen 2 is a data lake that's built on regular blob. So ADLS Gen 2, when I turn on that hierarchical namespace on my storage account, now supports immutable storage. The whole point of immutable storage is write once, read many. So once I write data, I cannot change that data, I cannot delete that data based on the type of hold I've done. That might be a time-based hold, so that time has to elapse before I can delete it could be a legal hold. So I have to take off the legal hold before I can then change the data. So now Data Lake also supports that immutable storage. And what's really nice about this, even with this immutable storage, I do have the option for block blob and a pen blob that I can't change the data that's been written, but I can append to it. So I can add to the end of those. So again, I'm not changing existing, but I can carry on adding data. And obviously once it's been added, that then becomes worm. So then I can just keep uh, trailing on the end. ADLS Gen 2, Date Lake also now supports encryption scope. So typically with a storage account, well, it's, it's always encrypted. Tip by default, it's encrypted with a Microsoft managed key, or I can do a customer managed key. Customer managed key, now it's in my key vault. I control the access to the key. I control the rotation of that key. But it's everything in the storage account using that one key. What encryption scopes let me do is I can have multiple keys, either Microsoft managed or customer managed, and I can apply them at container levels or even individual blobs. And while that's really useful, imagine I'm providing some service with lots of different customers I can still have one storage account, but I can have each customer maybe in a different container using a different encryption scope and therefore different encryption key, or maybe even at the blob level, I wanna do that. So now I can do those encryption scopes even when I'm using the data lake, so I have that hierarchical namespace enabled. In keeping with the fact that ADLS Gen 2 is built on top of blob, and so we got that immutable storage, well now, even for regular blob, I can do that append for that write once read many. So it's 
basically that, that same feature, but now not with a day late, just with regular blob. And then there's this new storage account conversion capability. So with a storage account, I have a certain resiliency. There's always three copies in my local region, like LRS, but then we have ZRS, where it's zone redundant. Those three copies are spread over the three availability zones that are exposed to my subscription in that region. I might have GCRS, where, hey, I've got the three copies locally over the three AZs, asynchronously copied to the pair region where there's three copies. And while we can switch between LRS to GRS, we've never been able to switch from LRS to ZRS or from GZRS to GRS. Well, now there is a customer initiated conversion process. In the past, the only way we could do it is we'd call support. Hey, support, I've got my LRS account. I want it to be ZRS, or I've got a ZRS account, I want it to be LRS. Now there's a customer initiated option where I can go in and trigger that conversion. Now, it still is a conversion. It can take up to 72 hours to complete, but I can now initiate that process. I don't have to call support. So that is now in preview. And then miscellaneous, um, this happened in the regular commercial cloud but now there's a new KMS DNS name for Azure China Cloud. So it's moving to this new azkms.core.chinacloudapi.cn, which points to two new IP addresses, but it's just a, a general change to how activation occurs uh, in Azure. So now it's come to that China Cloud as well. And that is it. I told you it was super quick this week. As always, I hope this was useful. Until next video, take care.